Well, good day, Tubes. How's she going? Pretty good here. <sighs> it's melted a bit. We've got, uh, well, it's still some around, but anyways. Uh, so today what we're going to do here is uh, give the uh, starter on this tractor a test. Whoa, jeez. And uh, what I'm going to do is uh, <clears throat> hook it up to, uh, just to a battery. Ground out the one guy to a frame somewhere. And uh, touch the positive onto uh, this to terminal on the starter here and uh, see if we can get it to, to crank a bit. Hopefully it's clean enough there. Um, I think I'm probably going to put all new cables on. <laughs> These cables that are, you know, like, yeah, probably not the greatest. But uh, just looking at this system here, looking in the book I got, wow, these are actually fairly simple system, surprisingly. There's no uh, solenoid on these things at all. Um, like basically what happens is this push button here pushes on a rod that goes through the casing here. And this is actually a push button here. There's another, basically looks like that in there. And that's what makes your connection. So, I mean, this hooks right to your battery. You can see that terminal there. And that goes down to that starter push button thing and then right to the starter. So when you, uh, the only thing I guess that, uh, the, well, they've got it set up with a switch here. I think that was their on and off switch there. It was kind of chintzy. I'm gonna probably put a ignition switch in. Um, key switch, keyed switch, probably. Uh, it's another bloody key to look after. <laughs> I hate keys. I got enough friggin' keys in my pocket now, as it is, that I don't need any more. So, I don't know, I might just set it up with a, maybe a hidden, like if I could get a spot maybe under here. I know the battery sits right up here, but you just need a, basically a spot to mount it that you could just turn it on and off, right? And I think that must just kill the uh, distributor something or another. I haven't quite exactly figured it out 100% yet, but uh, anyways, uh, we could technically hook my positive to here. Really not very clean. And uh, use the, the button and everything. I might try that actually. Let's uh, get to you on a tripod here and uh, we'll hook her up and see if we can get her to do anything. All right, I brought a brush. Let me get myself up here. I'm gonna try to hook it right to this crappy looking. <laughs> now, you know what? The guys at John Deere, well, this isn't a John Deere, I know. They were telling me that they can make battery cables up. Maybe I'll get them to do that for me. I don't know how how good these things are, but um, okay. Let's see here. I got uh, positive. We're gonna see how much here. I gotta actually have to clean. These are uh, pretty thick cables. So what the heck gauge are these ones? Uh, two hundred amp. Uh, booster. Oh man, the only one that says the gauge, and I can't read it. I'll have to find another spot. I think they're uh, fairly good though. They're not huge. Four gauge. Four gauge. Alright, so I wouldn't mind getting maybe right across. So we're going to give this a good clean here. But yeah, I could probably get them fellers to uh, to make me some cables up. They would do it, I'm sure. I should have brought my other my other guy. Now that scratched up a bit, anyways. Boy, this thing needs a lot of work. Oh man, I can't wait. It's gonna be awesome. Okay, so get that mushed on there real good. That's the, uh, 
Uh, that should be the positive, the negative's right here. Oh man, it's even worse. For dirtiness. The good thing about lead, it doesn't take long to clean her. Yeah, those guys could probably do me up a cable. So that'd be awesome. Okay, so technically this is just basically hooking up a battery. Just like that, essentially. Now, I believe is, well, it doesn't matter if it, uh, well, this will probably crank, this will probably crank even with it to switch off, I would imagine. I think that's sort of the idea of a solenoid. Anyways, we'll hook her to the negative and see if we get any sparks on a positive. Actually, I might just take that one off of there for a second. Hook her to the battery underneath me here. And uh, hopefully there's enough juice. And this battery's been warm and it's just been freshly charged. So, let's see. I don't get no sparkage there. That's good. All right. Ugh. And make sure your tractor is 100% out of gear. And you get run over like I did. And that wasn't very nice. Okay, if this starter is any good, this thing should crank over here. Hopefully. So, of course, I got no uh, carburetor out right now or fuel in the thing or. Wow, it needs a new ammeter gauge too. It's all, it's all wrecked looking. Oh, okay, so. Holy God, this thing, I'll show you all how wore out this is after. Now that it's not frozen to the, to the trailer. Okay, so uh, let me get you off the TP here because I think you'll get a better view over this side. You'll be able to hear it if it at all. So yeah, this was their uh, kill switch, I guess. I'll uh, probably change that to something else. And that, that's their lights, I guess, there. And that's probably seized up. Yeah, it doesn't even work. <laughs> okay, so technically this should go when I push this button here. Here we go. Oh, no, she's frying something. Something doesn't like that. Okay, we won't use the button then. We won't use the button. Now... Maybe it's just a bad ground. So if I can get a, a better ground somewhere. Now let's try the button now. Oh, she turned over. She turned over. But uh, didn't sound too good. <laughs> I wonder if this battery's hurting a bit too, maybe. Okay, let's try something else. We'll bypass that part. We'll go dangerously right to the starter here. Ready? Ooh. She rolled over, but you don't want to hold that on there too long. She rolled over. Now, I don't know if that battery's good or not, but she's got a bit of warmth in that already. So, I mean, she's drawing amps, but I think... Boy, I hope the engine's not having problems. It was running when we picked it up. It was actually running really good, but I'll give this one more shot here. Whew. I don't know if this battery's hurting or what the deal is. It's probably not good. This is warming up a bit, but the negative should be warming up more. Well, it's not too bad, but let's try... Uh, Another ground somewhere, maybe. Uh, so much paint and stuff still on this thing. It's hard to, to get a decent ground somewhere. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Um, holy jumping. What a mess, eh? That should uh, should have clicked over a little bit faster. I wonder if that starter's having a bit of problems. It's probably pretty seizured up in there. Uh, let's try grounding out to a bolt here, maybe. I don't know if that's going to be good enough, but... Let's try her again here. 
Am I afraid about getting zapped? Ah, uh, yeah. Oh, she's smoking a bit there. So I got juice on my battery, it's just I, I don't think I can get a decent ground. Now what about up in here? Come on. It might be all right up there. Nice fresh piece of meat, we'll say. Interesting. Doesn't want to go any more than like one. It could be this battery. I don't know. I don't really, really particularly want to hook on my truck and uh, try this, but um, uh, the only other thing I can do, I hope it's not just like locked up. Like the engine, maybe it's got a bad crank bearings or something. Lots of oil in her. She's somewhat thick. I don't think it'll have that problem, but hey, you never know. It did have kind of low oil pressure when it was running, but uh, there is a screen at the bottom that protects the uh, oil pump there, and uh, it could be all bunged up with crap by the looks of how black that oil is, but the starter turned anyways. It's not wicked hot yet, so that's good, but uh, I would imagine it's probably sat out there and it's probably pretty grimed up, so... Um, getting that off is not easy. You got to get these two bolts out, and then there's a big long, of course, you know, Bendix that goes down in here. So you might have to take this guy off, off the engine there, maybe to get uh, to get that out. I've got uh, while we're here, I got a new one of these. You know, that one's probably probably not bad, but it's probably not great either. So. Oh, I should get that off of there maybe too today. Check out inside there, see what's going on. But uh, I'll give this maybe one more little zap here. And uh, boy, oh boy, I hope it's gonna be all right on the inside. <laughs> that engine, uh, I really don't want to get into that. That's a little bit more than, well, you know, whatever. But now it could be that this is not very clean too bit of resistance through here but you'd think it would spark itself through that pretty quick but anyways let's give her another wow well it's enough of that for me <laughs> that's a bit scary before I blow my face off or my berries between the battery we'll say uh, okay so I guess that's all right for there but uh, I wouldn't mind maybe today getting into these spark plugs too seeing that'll tell you a lot what's going on in there I think we gotta do that from the other side though but uh, let's get this guy off of here maybe now and I'll show you the quick and easy way to do that Put you back on a tripod okay so we got their horrible gas line still on here i'm just gonna nip that off that's just not a safe idea for heat wise we'll say i'd sure rather have gas boil in a metal line than i would in a line like that so this thing should just come off of here Maybe. Let go the right way. Should. I might have to uh, do this bowl. Holy jumping. These are in there pretty good. I do have a new one, but ah, holy jumping! Ah. Hard on the fingers. <laughs> Bet you that thing leaked, anyways. Holy jumping! I don't know if I can get it now. There, there we go. Just had a zigzag her back and forth a little bit. 
There we go. Now she's getting a bit looser. Dirty thing, it gets loose and then tight again. Okay, what the heck is going on here? Maybe it's a, a different style one that I'm thinking. That looks like it's got a another little nut thing on it. I've never seen that before. Oh, it does too. Huh. I wonder if that's an original one. Could be. It's got like a square. <laughs> and then you're wrench gets stuck in there. Well, we'll just have to fiddle with it until it comes loose enough that that guy will slip off. I wonder if this one, where it mounts into the tank, still has the uh, original screen in it. There we go. Now we made her. Alright, what do we got in there? Ooh. That's uh, amazing that was still running. <laughs> On the goop in the tank. Alright, we'll take this guy right out too. Ah, there we go. And now we should able to spin that out and hopefully there's no gas still in there I really want to see that there's a screen that goes up oh quite a piece in there and if this is an original one it'll have I don't think it is an original one but it'll have the uh, oh it doesn't even have the screen <laughs> I'll show you the new one I got it's got the screen there though but there's another screen that usually goes up inside the tank let's put this back together for now I don't think I can really use any of those fittings, so well, uh, we'll probably clean this one up though. It's probably still somewhat good if I can get her in there. She'd be good for a spare. Oh my goodness. Pretty cool little thing these are. This one's different though, how it has those two nuts. That's odd. Okay. That looks pretty gross, but anyways, we'll, uh, we'll take her in the shop here. Alright, I've got Junior's motorcycle in here right now, just doing some service to it. Boy, he rides that thing so hard and it's been so good. This is the 125 here. We just, uh, Change the oil. I got a plug on order for it though. I could just get one up the road, but uh, I figured I'd just order some in. That's the little guy there. It's just a tiny little thing. It's not terribly bad, but I don't think it's ever had a new one, so I just throw a new one into it, I guess. They're like eight bucks. It's not too bad. That's a bit different one. It's a CPR6EA9S. And I think that's like a 10 mil thread on it. It's pretty small, so. Uh, but I don't think we changed oil on it last year, so she's pretty dark. He's been riding the, the sack right off her, we'll say, so it's pretty dark. Uh, like I said, i got to get a, a plug for it, and uh, it's on its way. It should actually be here tomorrow. And uh, he didn't have any rear brakes, as in the pedal was seized right up. Uh, and we, uh, we fixed that. I was going to make a video of it, and then we just kind of come out and did it, and, then, and that was kind of it. So, But uh, right in here... There's a pin that goes through with a, a little hole in a cotter pin on the back and a washer. And uh, that's supposed to be lubed up and there's no grease fitting on it. But it was just seized right solid, but it's beauty now. So we got it all apart. I actually had to uh, take this whole piece off and uh, warm this guy up a little bit so I get that pin to work out. Full of dirt, you know, and there's a little groove in that pin for holding some grease, but it was long ago gone. But she's good now, so... So we did that and uh, we took a link out of the chain, shortened it one link because it was pretty much to its limit already, I couldn't believe it. And uh, we put uh, new brake shoes, clean up the drum, it was pretty dirty, 
the shoes were pretty wore out. Um, these things are kind of silly because once you get a bit of dirt, dirt bike dirt in in those things, it just kind of grinds the, the pads right off. So it's kind of useless, really. Uh, for 200 bucks more, 100 bucks more, they just put discs on it like the front, and it'd be all good. But we also did the front too. This thing has been weird. I don't. I hope it was the pads. We switched the pads once on it, and we put on those fully sintered pads. And they were freaking just, wow. You could just touch the brakes and they're locked up. I'm like, oh, I don't like that. I actually bailed on this bike there last summer because I was whipping along, whipping along. Pretty good. I was in about third gear, second, third gear maybe. And uh, coming to slow down, I just touched the brakes. It was on wet grass and it just went woof out from under me. And that sucked. That I hit hard. And uh, that really sucks. So we, uh, we got some uh, uh, fully organic pads on it now which are apparently more like a factory one but uh, it just seems like there's so much pressure there like you just I don't know I don't know if it's going to be any better or not now they have to get broke in of course first so but uh, holy cow they it would just you could endo this thing and probably flip it right on top if you wanted but anyways that's another project so there's that guy there um, just pulled him off we got, uh, there's our line. That's the line I'm going to use for it. And this is a uh, uh, copper nickel brake line. And uh, 5 16 That's what you need. And darn it, you know what? I didn't bring my fittings up. I was going to make the brake line today too, but man, maybe we won't do that. I'm in this bag of tricks. And I got my bender. And flaring tool kit player the fittings and that's the new feller there Should go try it's a bit shorter I noticed though interesting I didn't uh, really pay too much attention to that and then I got my cutter here and uh, that's it for that bag uh, boy I thought I brought my fittings up never mind my fittings are did I, did I? I did I do but I don't think I have the one for the carburetor. So this is a pretty cool one. This is a, a dual one. You could actually have it going two ways if you really wanted to. But uh, that's the feller there. We got to do the fitting on. I didn't realize that that was such a short bowl on that. That's interesting. I don't think that's going to make a difference. But this one, you can see if we can pull this guy off got the screen in it so that's supposed to go up in the tank and then filter all the junk from the bottom of the tank out hopefully but that also looks like it well this has a reserve I think two main two turns reserve full open yeah so you got uh, I think it's a gallon reserve this is actually a direct replacement apparently um, from TSE, wicked expensive though. Holy man, seventy bucks for that thing. Uh, yeah, so it's FD tractors, nine and two and eight and blah blah blah. I'll all through it. So should should work good. I'll probably seal this up with some thread dope, which I didn't bring, of course, down in my other garage. So I guess we're not quite ready to do that today. But I wanted to have a look at plugs in that tractor. And I should probably try to turn it over with the plugs out, maybe. Pull the main coil wire or two, I guess, even though it shouldn't be sparking. But, uh, yeah, so that's that crappy old one. That's this nice fresh one. You get, yeah, like you get this extra dummy cap here, too, right? So I have to seal that up, too. But uh, that should be good there. Should be all right. And uh, yeah, the carburetor is over here. That's the sort of rebuilt one cleaned out one anyway so I've got the kit for it but I haven't rebuilt it yet this one did I put on ah, I did I put on the, the fitting guy okay but I'm not doing that today we'll do that another day I want to have a look at those sparky plugs okay so I got to get uh, some tools uh, in here we're gonna need probably this guy this guy. Holy jumping. My goodness. 
How the heck do you get that out of there? Okay, I'm just too weak, I guess. I can't get it out. Urgh, my goodness. Maybe I've never had that out yet. All right, so we'll go and uh, see if we can get some sparky plugs out. All right, I don't know what cylinder numbers are what, but those definitely look like original boots and wires, spark plug wires. Okay, this might be interesting trying to get in here because we've got the governor linkage there too. <laughs> you don't make it easy, Henry. Mr. Ford. Well. <laughs> He's made it a... One of them awesome things for me. I might actually have to use my, my wrench. I don't know if I can get in here now. Well, that wasn't very tight. <laughs> oh my goodness. I like these Stanley wrenches, but in a way, but this they got a, the push button there. You gotta push to release your feller. I don't really like that. Front mount uh, distributor on this archer is terrible. Okay, how does this one look? Wow, how is that even running on that? I don't know if you guys can see that. That's kind of oily. Uh, it wasn't smoking when it was running, but uh, it's kind of kind of oily looking. Well, we'll go for this one here. Oh, what is that that just come off? That's interesting. There's a nut lying in here. Where the heck did that come from? It almost fell in the engine. Hmm. Let's see if they've got all the same spark plugs in here. This is a RH12, RH12, the second one anyways. Probably turn it off by hand, it wasn't that tight. But we'll put the wrench in here somehow and uh, it'd probably be, whoa, probably be better to uh, my wrench in there too so we're gonna have to get some new plugs I guess and if I could get this thing cranking over good I'd like to do a compression test on it too but I think we're gonna have to install that new starter for that well, this one's not looking terrible bad it's not oily anyways that one in the back there's got me a little bit concerned that one's not terrible bad I'll just lay them out as they uh, they come out. Let's put a little bit there. Holy cow, these are getting worse to get into here, this tank. It's so low here, right? But they're not uh, wicked tight in there anyways. Last one will have to go up the other way. So, let's see, how is this one looking? Oh, it's not too bad either. It's got some weird stalagmites growing on the electrode there, but just a little brown, or uh, blackish, sorry. It was running like a real <laughs> bag of you-know-what, we'll say, when uh, we were looking at it there because the carburetor was just totally messed right up. And the guy selling it to me was pretty messed up too, actually. Now, this one, I may not be able to get into there because there's a, a bolt right on the end there. I'm gonna have to probably, probably get in here with, uh, with a wrench. I'm thinking, I just can't, because there's a bolt like right here. I can't get in, I can't get into it here. So let me uh, see if I got a wrench for that. Okay, I got a great big greasy 7 8 to get in there, hopefully. 
be a lot easier with the, uh, not even tight. <laughs> be a lot easier with the hood off too, but I don't really want to get too much of the hood off and stuff getting stuff exposed until we uh, can get it in that container. So, oh, this one's not super so bad either. It's a lot of dirt in there. I should have probably blew the uh, dirt out of the plugs first. But anyways, what can we do, huh? So, I guess we'll give her a, another try here on the starter. Ooh, there is a lot of junk in these things. Maybe I should give them, I'm gonna give them a light blowout here. Okay, I just put the threads in, a couple, a few threads here, just so the junk doesn't go down. out so I don't blow the threads out of them. And I don't know if it's going to do that. I hope this thing does actually crank over a little better with uh, all these going. So we'll put those down in order. Okay, uh, if I can get into the main distributor wire here. Um, do, 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 do. What the heck one is that? I don't actually know. Well, I'm probably going to have to do a new distributor anyways. Is my thinking. Holy jumping the wiring on this is just so freaking bad. I don't even know where that one's going on the alternator there. It's not tight, that's for sure. Jeez. Broken. <laughs> Their charge wire is resting on the hot manifold here. And there's oh, three wires out of the seven or eight that are broken. So that's not really much good. Um, okay, well, we'll, uh, we'll head her back to the other side here, hook her up, and see if we can get her to turn over a little better. All right, we're hooked. Positive to positive, negative to negative, and I like that ground up there, I guess. So we'll try this again here. No plugs. That's definitely better, so it's probably this battery's a little pooched. Um, I've got my uh, my other big battery down there. Maybe I'm gonna go grab it, give it another shot. So I'd like to see if I get this to crank over a little faster, but. That's, that's about right though, really, for these old girls. Uh, but I gotta try my other battery, see if it's any different. And hopefully it's all right. I don't know if it is or not, but. Um, now we should we should try it um, through that switch again here. Okay, now that should technically work. This should go here. Yeah, yeah, that's not too bad. I think that battery's a little hurting though. He's a little hurting, so I'll take it, maybe back down, put it back on my charger, and I'll grab my big JD battery. Okay, this old strong box, she's a little higher cold cranking than the other battery was. The other one was about 880, this one's 925, so a little more. So anyways, we'll hook up this feller here. We'll see if this one cranks any better. And if it's sort of about the same, with two different batteries, I'm probably leaning that the starter is pretty tired. <laughs> I imagine it's pretty corroded in there. So let's give her a shot. Yeah, I would say that starter's maybe hurting a little bit. But that's okay because we got a new one to put on it. Not cheap starter, but <laughs> anyways. Probably could have had this guy rebuilt, and I probably will. I will probably change uh, change this one out and then uh, get this one up for a rebuild. There's a guy not too super far from me that does them. Starters and alternators and stuff like that, right? So, um, 
but uh, I just got a new one. I want it reliable, but I want it looking holy like it's been beat to, you know what, but I, wanna, I want it to be reliable, you know, like I want to fix some of these, these links here. This one's pretty rough there. <laughs> there's a lot of play there. And there's something going on up front here. I don't really know what yet. And there's uh, quite a bit of play in this joint. Uh, these things are kind of silly though because you got to buy this this whole rod Again for this one and those ones they're not terrible bad, but I might be able to just get the joint here. Maybe Just replace that it'll tighten her up a little more, but and the bearings are all rough and stuff too in these guys Like I don't know what's missing In there, but something's not right so Oh, fun stuff. But anyways, we got to start on her. Literally. <laughs> start on her. I will just thread those plugs back in for now. And uh, I won't tighten them up or nothing. But we'll uh, just tighten them uh, finger hand tight maybe for right now. Just to keep the crap out we'll say RH12 probably get those over at the little Canadian tire there I would imagine yeah there's a bar going right here and it's for the throttle the governor assembly so you get kind of if that wasn't there it'd be perfect for getting in there but anyways so, I'm a little concerned. I bet you, whenever we can get this thing cranking the way it should be, to do that compression test, I bet you this back one here we're gonna find is having a little problem. It's letting oil through, which means rings and sleeves. But it wasn't smoking, so I mean, how far do you let it go until you want to tear an engine down? But I don't know. For right now, I think I'll just leave her. So, I mean, holy cow, we got a wire there. I don't know where the heck that's gone to. Holy jumping. <laughs> that's an oil pressure line there. That's what that fella is. So, but yeah, I got to make the fuel line. And uh, I think it has to. Oh boy, where's that? Where's that going to come out? Let's go grab the, the new fuel bowl here. All right. We'll get that stuffed up in there, hopefully. And get her started, because I want to see kind of where my outlet's going to have to come out. Boy, that's got to go in a bit more, but that's not uh, going to make it fun. That This post is here for all the wires, right? That'll go a bit more, but that should actually be that way. So, that means, well, you know, until I get her fully tightened in, I don't exactly know. Because you'd want that, oh, I don't want to twist on that too hard. You'd want your uh, fuel valve guy there to be out, you know, so you can right here, right? So. So one more, yeah, we're not looking too bad. I think if I could get one more, uh, half a turn there. So, technically then, that would mean that it would sit like that. So we actually gotta change these guys around, technically. Hopefully we get this all going with no leaking. These fittings aren't too bad though. Man, I cannot do things. I've never had very good coordination with stuff like this for my left hand. But uh, anyway, so yeah, that should, should sit like that so we can Turn her on. Now that should go 
straight out 90. Okay, let's go the other side here. Okay, so that'll come through straight through there. It actually doesn't look too bad there. As we get her tight it'll be fine. This guy will... Whoa, don't drop her. <laughs> Hang on, I gotta use two hands. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I know that might stay there on its own, yeah. I know the factory lines, you can get them still from Steiner there. They come through and they, so they've actually got like a, a fairly big radius bend, something sort of like this, even like more of a whoop. So I mean, I can just do, do that and I have to get her on the right spot there, but we'll have to do some fit and we'll get all this mounted on here first though. Now, my other concern is that air tube. I'm gonna go grab it too, hang on a sec. Okay, so I got a couple of nuts here too. I'm just gonna thread them on just to get this guy from potentially wanting to go for a run. Lock nuts, I don't think this tractor ever had lock nuts on it before <laughs> it's in its life. And new anyways. Okay, so my concern is something's not right with this exhaust here. I know that's factory where it comes out, but this, uh, I don't know. This air tube is just too nice looking. Really chrome it? Why would you chrome it? Okay, so my concern is is not gonna fit under here right now. Well, maybe it'll be all right there. I don't know exactly where it's gonna mount into that cleaner up there because I haven't got that right, but it's uh, it's pretty close there. I guess that doesn't look terrible too bad. I'll look around this side here maybe. It's a bit tight there, but maybe it'll mount a little higher up, something like that. This carburetor has to come up a little bit too, so. I think it should all work. Does not look great chrome though. I, I might take that down and see if I can sandblast the crap out of it and get rid of that chrome. <laughs> I don't know. It just looks like, wow. It looks like one of those pictures where everything else is black and white but the guy in the picture is color, if you know what I mean. Uh, not colored, but you know, color or the background's color and everything else is black and white. It just doesn't look right. But I mean, we got a new carburetor too, right? So that's gonna have to get grimed up pretty quick too. And I'm pretty sure it will, so. Anyways, that doesn't look too bad. Well, that's it for today. Gotta get going. So uh, it's good to get a couple things figured out on this, you know, and see what we're kind of looking at so far. Uh, I wanted to show you this joint here too is really bad. There's a lot of play in that one. And that joint not so good there. And that looks like it might be fun to get that apart. Uh, here's a torch coming. <laughs> get in behind there and torch, I guess that's a nut back in there, and torch that fella off, but that would definitely be a whole joint replacement and pin bar replacement there, but I don't know how much more you could drive that. And It's funny, because this one's tight over here, but the other one's loose and vice versa on the other side, but there is something loose on that axle pin up there just I don't know oh boy that might have to all come off and come apart and see what's going on there too and this side's a little wiggly not as bad as the other one but oh man gonna need new front tires I think I think it sat flat on these for a while which it's doing again so uh, new tires new rims I looked at TSC for these and they have one they usually stock them hundred and forty dollars a piece I'm gonna look other places and uh, see, now this tractor actually, this is the wrong tire for it. It was originally a Firestone, and it was smooth all the way down here with one rib in the middle. That's the original one. Steiner wants 175 or something like that dollars a piece. But you can still get them. I'm like, holy cow. But something's not right here because, like, it's coming off the bead here. I don't know. I'm not even going to probably sweat with those things. I'll just uh, peel them off, put new ones on whenever we get to that stage, but I'd like to get her at least running first here so I could at least get her off my tractor and then uh, 
get it into this uh, container here for working on, actual working on. So, I mean, it's nice on the trailer here, but it's, you gotta have it, uh, gotta have it off, so. But uh, we'll get that uh, hopefully going if we get some nicer weather and get it running and uh, figure out, uh, we'll have to switch that starter, I think, to, I don't think that's gonna start and that wiring is terrible too, oh my gosh, oh man. We gotta get out of it though, but I haven't uh, finished our, uh, I've got the little pin welded in, but for my manual crank there, I don't have it, uh, I don't have it going yet, but I could probably start it pretty pretty easily off of that, I would think. So, and you know what, something else I haven't ever tried this back here in the gear oil. I know there's some in it, because it was pissing out, but oh yeah, it's of course uh, full of water usually what happens with these it just sits there all the time and gets condensation and drips in and mixes around and turns into milk Ugh. anyways well if you put chocolate syrup in that you get chocolate milk so yeah but anyways that's it for today uh, it also needs a good wash uh, one day I'll get the pressure washer going and give her a good wash before we get her split I want to get her nice and clean but got to get her got to get her running first Boy, oh boy, what a mess this wiring is. I don't really know where this one's going. Oh, it's going up. Oh, it's going up too. Uh, looks like the light switch. Okay. So that probably would have ran along there into the lights at one time. Well, we'll run new wires too because all these are pretty crunchy and eh, not worth screwing with. But that looks like it went into that light switch. It's all seizured up. So... Anyways, gotta go. Thanks again for watching. We'll catch you all later. Oh boy, we got a job to do here <laughs> on this thing, but once we get it running, it'll be all right. But uh, I know there's a seal. Oh, actually, let's go back here. Oh, when it was running, I didn't notice it until we got it on the trailer, but that milky fluid was just pissing out of here. Right out from under here, there's a little pin. So there's gotta be a, a seal, so We've got the, the clutch mechanism there, and in about here, somewhere is the Sherman transmission, and then it does a shaft back into the rear transmission here. There's a seal somewhere that's leaking inside there. Oh God, I hope I don't have to tear it down too far. I don't know if it's like, you know, the input shaft that comes through and there's a seal like between here and where the Sherman is and the clutch should be dry. There's no fluid in there, so there's a, a wall in here somewhere. Probably been about here, just before like the transmission. It'd be all wet in there for the gears. But I don't know, we'll have to dig into it. You'll see that leaking when we get it running. It was it was leaking pretty good, so it looks like there's a fair bit of fluid left in there, so we got a bit of time with her anyways. Ah, okay, gotta go, catch you all later. Thanks again for watching, and you guys have a good day.